All right, we are here to the finding motivated sellers section of this free wholesale course. And when it comes to finding motivated sellers, I mean, there is literally hundreds of ways that we can do this, okay? But keep in mind, this is a marketing business. We're either gonna need to spend time or we're gonna need to spend money to get in front of these individuals or to get them in front of us, okay? So some of my favorite ways to go about finding motivated sellers, all right? Number one, I would say, is using um, a Driving for Dollars app to go out and drive for dollars. And essentially, we're gonna get in our car and we're gonna drive around and we're gonna find properties that have signs of distress, often serious signs of distress. So we're gonna get in our car, we're gonna go driving around, and we're gonna be looking for properties that have tarps on the roof. We're gonna be looking for properties that have broken windows. We're gonna be looking for properties that have overgrown bushes maybe properties with gutters hanging off the roof. I love seeing properties with you know, tall grass, broken down cars in the driveway, you know, just properties that look like they need some work or some love, okay? These are distressed properties. And the great thing about driving for dollars is we are seeing physically firsthand properties that are showing signs of distress. You can't buy lists of these properties typically, but when we're driving around, we're gonna be able to build our own list. So that is one of my favorite ways. And in fact, I have bought hundreds of houses from Driving for Dollars. And there's some really, really great apps and tools to help make this easier. And I'll actually drop those down below this video, some links to some, some apps that I use and give you all some free trials to go check them out. Uh, but Driving for Dollars is gonna be one of the best and easiest ways to get started because it's gonna be a very, very cost-effective approach. You're not gonna have to spend a ton of money to do so. But again, you're gonna need to spend some time. Okay, so we're going to build those lists from our driving for dollars efforts. Another couple ways to go about finding motivated sellers is to go in pull lists. And I'll drop some resources down below of, of places that I use to pull lists. But the lists that I'm typically going to go for, my bread and butter list, are going to typically be my vacant homes and my absentee owned properties. And the reason being is, is I've bought about a thousand houses in the last 20 years. 70 plus percent of the homes that I've bought have either been vacant or absentee owned. That is the low hanging fruit. It has been when I started, it is still to this day. So I always encourage individuals to start with vacant lists, start with absentee lists, and then once they pull those lists, there's a couple different ways that they can then market to these individuals. Number one, they can send direct mail. Now direct mail may not be the cheapest for source of marketing, but it's typically gonna be the most ethical source of marketing, right? You are gonna to pay to get a postcard or a letter delivered to these individuals that own these vacant houses or own these absentee houses. And then from there, they will call you as needed, all right? There's some more cost-effective ways to market to these lists. One could be cold calling or cold texting these individuals, but be careful because if they're on the federal do not call list, you could get in a little bit of trouble there. So you just wanna be very cautious in the way that you are marketing to them. Direct mail is, again, gonna be the most um, ethical way of going about it because we are literally paying a federal agency, the USPS, to send our message, our marketing to their front door, okay? Now, we can cold call, we can cold text, we can do direct mail. We talked about driving for dollars. There's lots of other lists that we can also pull when it comes to polling list. I like to pull the vacants and the absentees first, because again, that's gonna be our low hanging fruit. But there's other lists that we can go pull. We can go pull code violations. We can go pull pre foreclosures. We can maybe pull expired listings, right? We could pull tax delinquents, right? We can pull lists that are high equity or tired landlords, individuals that have owned a property for 12 or 15 years, and it's, it's absentee owned, meaning that they, that they don't live in that property. Right? We can pull lists of divorce, like we talked about earlier. Uh, disease, not so much, but we can pull lists of recent deaths. And this is referred to as probate. We can even actually start marketing to individuals in the pre-probate process where you know, they maybe have, have already passed away, but they haven't actually gone to court. So there's lots of different lists that we can pull. And again, we're gonna be wanting to pull lists of individuals that we're gonna presume to have a high level of motivation, all right? If we're just gonna be pulling random lists of properties, that's probably not gonna be the best use of our time. But we know that anyone that's gonna be dealing with death, divorce, disease, you know, unpaid taxes or pre-foreclosure, for example, they're gonna have a high level of motivation. They're gonna need to do something with this property and often very quickly 
so they don't lose the property. And that's where we come in. We can offer to help them liquidate it. The conveniences that I mentioned so many times in the last video, the last module here, right? So when it comes to you know pulling lists, there's a ton of different places to pull lists. And I'll drop some resources down below on, the fav on some of my favorite places to pull lists. But when we pull lists, we often hit them with you know, a phone call, potentially a text message, you know, if we can get them to answer our call as a follow-up method. And then we even send direct mail to these individuals. Again, marketing is nothing more than a fancy word for getting people on the phone. So if we can get them on the phone from our efforts, great. Otherwise, we're going to spend money to get our message sent to them so they can call us and they can get us on the phone. That's the goal here with all of your marketing. It is getting homeowners on the phone, making friends with them, and offering them a bunch of convenience in exchange for a discount. You've heard me say that a few times now. That's what this business is. So finding motivated sellers, you know, we can do driving for dollars. We can pull lists and then market to that list. But there's lots of other ways that we can find motivated sellers. One of my favorite ways is networking with other investors or other individuals that may know motivated sellers. So if I can't find them directly, I can actually create an army of people that know that I'm looking for these individuals and they can help bring them to me. So networking with your friends, your family, your acquaintances and letting them all know, hey, I'm looking to buy some distressed properties as is cash and quick. These are the conveniences that we're going to be able to offer. All right. So networking can be very, very beneficial. In fact, the first two or three wholesales that I did about 700 deals ago, give or take, uh, was from a property manager. I was networking with some of my local property managers at Aria Club. I found a property manager that had a few clients that had properties that were, you know, sitting vacant and the clients didn't have the money to fix those properties up. And I came in and said, hey, I can help you alleviate this pain point. Because a vacant property costs money to sit there. You're paying taxes on it. You're paying insurance on it. You might even have utilities on it. Every month that property isn't rented, it costs money to own it right? It's not necessarily an asset unless it's rented, bringing money in. So we can go and we can offer to help these individuals and we can offer to buy the property at, you know, 70 cents on the dollar, give or take. And that's the, that's how I did the first two or three deals was networking with property managers. Now you can also network with real estate agents or real estate brokers. You can network with, you know, divorce attorneys, eviction attorneys, elder law or estate planning attorneys, just to name a few people. I get contractors from time to time that bring me motivated sellers that are either clients of theirs or again, just acquaintances. So one of the things I always like to tell my students is, you know, in the beginning, you have to understand this is a marketing business and you need to be shouting from the rooftops that you are looking to buy distressed properties. If people don't know that you're looking to buy distressed properties, how do you think they are going to bring them to you? They're not. But if they know and you make posts on social media and you go to networking events and you're constantly telling your friends, your family and any acquaintances, like making Facebook posts, for example, that you are looking to buy some properties, some distressed properties that need some work. You know, you should be in the business of loving properties that need work because these are the ones that are going to really allow us to get the discounts because the sellers, the owners of these properties they're going to want that convenience, right? Somebody that has a house that is in good shape isn't going to probably want to sell it at a 70% discount or, you know, 70% of its true value because it's in good shape. They know they can get more for it. But when you're dealing with properties that are leaking water from the roof and the HVAC doesn't work anymore and it needs a full rehab and it's been vacant for a year or two and it's got boarded up windows, I mean, just picture that. That is a problem, right? So we can come in and we can offer convenience in exchange for that problem, but we can get a really good deal on it. And if we get a really good deal, we can turn around and we can sell that contract and we don't even need to buy the property before we can actually get paid. It is so amazing. So there are lots and lots of ways to go about finding motivated sellers. I love driving for dollars. I love pulling lists and calling, texting, and mailing those individuals. And then additionally, um, I love to network. I like, I like networking with people that are in the industry. I like networking with other investors, title companies, contractors, attorneys, you name it, right? Insurance agents is another good one. They're constantly insuring properties for people. 
They know people that own properties. And they often hear of people that are having problems and they're facing distress. And they may need to liquidate those properties. And if you can be there to help them, you can get paid and create winning scenarios for everybody. All right. Now, there's other ways to go about finding motivated sellers. And some of these other ways may cost a little bit more money than time. Again, it's going to be time or money in the end. Often both, but it's going to be time or money. So some of the other ways that I love to get motivated sellers is to build a website and to do SEO on that site or even do pay-per-click marketing where I'm paying to get traffic to my site so they can fill out a form or call the number on that site. It's going to cost money to do both of those things. You can also spend money on mass media, right? You could do every door direct mail through the UPS. You could get on the radio. In fact, I'm on and off the radio all the time. You could go get a billboard, right? Maybe you have a ton of money and you're willing to do television commercials. A great way to go about getting your phone to ring. Remember, marketing for motivated sellers is nothing more than getting motivated people that own property on the phone. So if you don't have the time to reach out to them, then you need to spend some money on a marketing budget and get your message in front of them so they can call you. Otherwise, you are going to have to reach out to them. It's that simple. There's really no way around it, okay? I know individuals that are doing park bench advertising or bus stop advertising. You've probably heard of bandit signs as a form of advertising. The bandit sign is going to cost you time and money, but they are relatively cheap. An abandoned sign is basically just a sign that says, we buy houses with a phone number on the bottom of it. You've probably seen these signs many of times, hundreds of times, right? Be careful with bandit signs because each individual county, city, municipality is going to have different rules on these, right? So I don't necessarily recommend, you know, doing bandit signs unless you know the, the, the laws in your area. So have a little caution with that and be aware. But they can be great sources of marketing to get your phone to ring to find these motivated sellers. They can be great sources of marketing, all right? Um, there's lots of other ways, of course, right, that we can use to find motivated sellers. And down below this video, I'll actually list out about 10 or 15 additional ways that we can use to find motivated sellers. But this is a marketing business. And in fact, this right here, this module, finding motivated sellers, is quite possibly the most important module in this entire free course on wholesaling because this is all about the marketing. This is all about getting in front of the people that are motivated, that need the conveniences that we offer in exchange for discounts. So we have to get really, really good at marketing. Now, on average, from you know investors that I talk to and network with and, and mastermind with, you know, on average, it's going to cost somewhere between $1,500 and $3,500 in marketing to find a motivated seller. This is a numbers game, folks. Can you pick up the phone and call 10 people and get a motivated seller on the phone? Yeah, it's possible, but it's pretty unlikely. You're going to need to do a lot of prospecting, a lot of calling, a lot of texting, a lot of mailing, right? Maybe even spending money on AdWords or social media marketing or radio ads or whatever it may be, bandit signs even to get enough sellers to call you to find one that really needs your convenience. They're ready to sell at a discount. They're okay leaving money on the table, but they just really want that convenience. They don't, they don't want to wait three or four months on the traditional market and deal with agents and brokers and showings and, and commissions and seller concessions and all these things. They just want to get done with this in a couple of weeks, and you can be the one to help them with that, to keep that in mind. So this is a marketing business. You got to get good at the marketing. All right. Now, can you do it for less than that? Yes, but you're going to be spending time. So I know a lot of investors that don't have time, right? They maybe work a full-time job. Maybe you work a full-time job and they don't have three or four hours every day to be prospecting, calling, texting, door knocking, following up, going to network, networking events, so on and so forth. So they are willing to just spend money to get their phone to ring. And that's a great approach. You're going to typically need to spend, again, between $1,500 and $3,500 to get enough calls to find somebody that's motivated, all right? But there's a lot of individuals that are on the other side of that, you know, where they might not just be willing to spend a couple thousand a month to get their phone to ring. They may not have that. In exchange, you have to be the other person on the end of that phone, making those outbound calls, getting these sellers on the phone, making friends, running appointments, setting appointments so you can go meet them and shake their hand. All right, and then offer to purchase the property from them. 
all right? So if you don't have money to put into marketing to get your phone to ring, you need to be the one ringing other people's phones. It's that simple. It's time or money, all right? Now, the beautiful thing about wholesaling and having this marketing budget is after you do a few deals, your marketing budget is self-funding. So let's say that I spend, you know, two grand, maybe even three grand to get a deal, but that deal yields me fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in profits because I don't actually have to buy the home to wholesale it. I just need to spend some time and money on my marketing to find these individuals, find these sellers. All right. But let's say I spend a couple thousand to get my phone to ring enough times. Right? And I go make 15 or 20,000. Well, now I'm just going to take you know, 10, 15, 20% of that profit and I'm going to put it right back into my marketing. And after you get good and you can start doing deals consistently, your marketing budget will self fund itself from the deals that you're doing. But here's the kicker in the beginning, you haven't done any deals. You're probably brand new and green if you're watching this video. So you're going to need to invest into yourself and into your business to get your phone to ring. And that investment could be money and paid marketing, or it could be time. You get to pick that, all right? How much time, I don't know. It's going to determine on how much you know time you're putting in, how much effort you're putting in, what list you're calling, what type of marketing you are doing, right? But typically speaking, a lot of individuals that I've worked with you know, can get a deal in, within you know two months, maybe three months, if they're working with, with a team and a group and, and, they're, and they're getting some coaching. All right. I've often heard of people, you know, spending six, eight, ten months to get their first deal on their own. All right. So just keep that in mind that if you work with somebody that's experienced, it's going to speed up this process big time in order to help you start doing deals. The first deal is going to be the hardest deal because you're going to need to build your confidence and you're going to need to learn how to negotiate and you're going to need to learn some new skill sets. OK, but this is going to be one of the most lucrative skill sets that you can learn so I would encourage you to not give up, all right? Before we wrap up this video, I want to tell you a quick story about how I got started. I got started in this business about eight years ago, full time. And at the time, I had $62,000 worth of credit card debt. And I hired a coach after about two months of struggling and said, hey, you know, I just, I, I just need to get my first deal so I can get the confidence and, and then get this ball rolling. And he said, great, Dave, this is a marketing business. What kind of marketing are you doing? And at the time, I was maybe doing an hour every other day of cold calling. And he said, Dave, at that rate, you may get a deal in about six to eight months. And I said, man, I want to try to get one in the next, you know, six to eight days. Like, what do I got to do? And he said, well, you guys are going to need to spend a lot of time prospecting or you're going to need to spend some money to get your phone to ring. So I said, all right. And I, and I spent about, I think it was about $4,000 on direct mail. And I was in the whole 62000 by the way, in credit card debt. So I went from 62 to, what is that, 66000 I figured, you know what, I'm already in the hole here. What's the difference, right? It's not that big of a difference, right? And I spent $4,000 on direct mail. And from that effort, I maybe got 40 or 50 phone calls. And I had a deal within two weeks because my phone started ringing from individuals that needed my convenience. And I learned firsthand that this is a marketing business and we got to get our phone to ring or we have to ring other people's phones. So what did I do? I put that $4,000 on a credit card. I sent out a bunch of direct mail and I got two deals in the first three weeks after working with a coach who had basically told me, you know, if you're not going to ring people's phones, you got to get them to ring yours. Like how else do you expect this to happen? You know, you have to get in front of people. You have to run appointments and make friends and offer to provide convenience in exchange for these discounts. Someone's not just going to show up at your door and knock on the door and just say, hey, I got this house that you know, has a bunch of equity in it. Do you want it? You got to go out there and you got to get it. You got to find it. So I sent a bunch of direct mail, 30, 40, probably 40 different calls come in, did two weeks and three deals because my phone started ringing. Now, additionally, I was following up with leads and I was cold calling. And I was maybe spending two or three hours a day as well. So you see there, I was spending time and money to prospect and find sellers. And after about three or four months of spending money on, not even, I'd say two to three months of spending money on marketing, I never had to reach into my pocket ever again to fund the marketing budget. The deals I was doing did. But in the beginning, you are going to have to spend time and money to locate and market to these motivated sellers. I cannot stress that enough. 
I get people come to me all the time and say, Dave, I don't have any time or any money. And here's the deal. This isn't the business for you. You need to invest into yourself and into your business to get leads so you can then work those leads and convert those leads into deals or contracts and then take those contracts and sell those to other investors in your market for big spreads, all right? But without spending time or money to get in front of these individuals, this is going to be a very difficult business. Now, it doesn't have to be very expensive if you're willing to commit the time, though. I just want to end with that. If you're willing to commit two, three, maybe four hours a day, depending, you know, five, six days a week, then you might not need to spend very much money at all, but it's going to cost you time. And if you don't want to spend more than just two or three hours a week, like me in some cases, that I'm going to need to spend two or three or $4,000 a month to get my phone to ring. This is a marketing business, folks. I cannot stress that enough. So down below this video, we're going to have a couple different resources for driving for dollars. We're going to have some resources on where you can go and you can pull lists of motivated sellers, the absentees, the vacants, the, you know, any sort of distress. Um, and we're going to also have some, a short list, you know, 10, 15 ways that are my favorite ways to go about finding motivated sellers in places that we can start marketing and spending our time and efforts to generate these leads, which will then turn into contracts, which then turn into sales, which then turns into you getting paid. So guys, this is a marketing business. I cannot say it enough times. You have to understand that. If you don't have any money or any time, this isn't the business for you, so please stop right here, right now. All right, the next module, we're going to talk all about making offers and actually what we're going to do after we locate ourselves a motivated seller, how we're going to go about you know, making a friend and running the appointment. So tune into the next episode here, or the next module, uh, making offers. We're going to jump on in. We'll see you there.